Welcome back to the Big Board. I thought I'd take a moment to have a look at A Frozen Hell. It's been a while since I've created any video or uh, commentary on the game. I've been posting a few pictures on Facebook as things progress from a narrative standpoint, but nothing to really kind of give us a, an overview of the big picture. Keeping in mind that this TCS platoon scale game uh, started on 8th of December at 11 a.m., and we are now at 8.30 a.m. on December the 9th. And so we've gone through um, a lot of 30-minute turns at night, which allowed uh, Pajari and his crew to conduct an ineffective night raid. Unfortunately, that didn't have the desired consequences. But in the meantime, as daylight is broken, both sides are starting to have... Uh, an effect in their own way on the various elements inside the, uh, in, you know, involved in the game. Uh, so the scenario, it's a full campaign we're playing. <clears throat> Not sure how far we'll get into it, but we'll certainly get the, the 9th of December finished, which, you know, it's another 20 turns or 15 turns or something like that. Um, so let's have a look at the board and see what's going on. There's two full battalions on the board at the moment with a third that's making progress over on the sort of far right hand side over there we're not going to bother looking too much at them they're just doing a little bit of a road march to get here in the far distance there just there where i just pull it pulled it out of frame right there the top there is where the mortar units are situated and the artillery park is a little bit further back and there are some spotters that are up in a fire tower uh just behind those mortars about five or six hexes to the rear so there's that and then here on the right we have the 364th battalion and it's three companies are uh, making slow progress but effective progress uh, they they did a, mostly a night march uh, from this island and around keeping in contact with the uh, shoreline so as not to get lost or have any negative effects applied to it. Uh, seems like a bit of a gamey exercise there, just mainly because nighttime, the, the, the forces in this battle really hunkered down, particularly the, the Soviets, because they weren't prepared for the cold. So they built bonfires and all that sort of stuff, which is why there are these bonfire counters and, and whatnot. And of course, if you play Red Winter, you know that the cold was so severe that there were losses for, for units if they didn't build the bonfire and stay around them. So I haven't been impressed with that aspect and I couldn't really come up with a an, an easy mechanic to or rule to sort of compensate for that. So the guys had orders. They, uh, they didn't fail their orders. They stayed within the contact of the coastline so they didn't get it lost. Maybe they got a lot, a lot of frostbite, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, they've they've you know pushed a company across uh, directly uh, uh, here, taking lots of damage, but soaking up a lot of fire from these. What was there were three platoons were here, uh, dug in, and this rather effective you know the red uh, the white numeral inside the red box is the is the morale here. If you can see that that one kind of pops out to you, uh, very low number is good. Uh, low mor low morale rating, meaning that they are tough and resilient. They have fought ex exceedingly well, uh, so much so that all these units here down the bottom right-hand side of the screen actually retreated back, and they're going to uh, reconsolidate and attack again. They're not going to fail their orders, but they are going to pull back. There's probably eight uh, or more 10-step uh, losses in here. They're now bringing up their machine guns and trying for a more deliberate assault style on on this end piece here. We did manage to dislodge one of these platoons, and it took a lot of units to do it. Now, while these guys are rated as fives, with the rules modifications that are floating around, these are all rated as threes, which is what I've been doing. So they don't all have the submachine guns that they were alleged to have. So the and same goes for the high rated six and six uh, SMG rated uh, Soviet platoons. I've dropped them down to fours to, just to kind of balance things out. 
and uh, I've withdrawn all of the mortar uh, platoons from that were attached to each individual company because they weren't there. Uh, anyway, uh, so moving on this flank through here has been really effective for, for the Soviets, which is fine because in our plans that we've drawn up for the Finns, we're happy that this is happening because we have this entire company here uh, in a ready state to uh, come out of reserve and attack uh, once these units sort of get into this clearer area, we want to we want to come and, and hit them this way. That's uh, Pajari's plan for the JR-16 formation. I won't butcher the Finnish language by trying to uh, pronounce the, the correct uh, name here. It's a Jaeger of some type. Nevertheless, they're here. Uh, we've got our shoreline defenses over there, just you're looking for pot shots and things across the across the ice when they can see them. And then, of course, you've got the great uh, gravel pit over here on the right. Let's have a look at that. Sorry, over on the left, I should say. Let's see if I can get this camera to sit effectively. I've got a very unusual camera, that, this new camera stand that slides around a lot. It's very annoying. All right, we're going to just... I think that's the best I can do here without it slipping any further. It doesn't have a grippy base. I may have to put something on the base of it. Okay, uh, this is the 609th or what's left of it. These stacks here are units that I've pulled off the line because they have three or more step losses out of five. And we're now advancing with the rest of the units. And we're, as you can see, we've hit uh, a as we've closed here, Opportunity Fire had suppressed a lot of these units. And uh, I finally got one unit adjacent that didn't that wasn't suppressed, so he spotted some mortar fire in, but to no effect. There's a there's two 37 millimeter guns here and a platoon of infantry dug in. And then of course this is where the hotel is. And uh, you'll notice I don't have that heavily defended yet. And I, I I've been debating that, but I I kind of feel like while this is a good high ground location, the terrain doesn't really help you as much as you would think. And so my intention is to sort of hold here as long as I can and then you know, go back along this narrow spit here, uh, back to the bridge where we've got forces dug in there and and do some fighting here. I think this is a better position to defend from because you've got all this, you know, billiard rated terrain with lots of positive modifiers for, for gun, for shooting at the enemy in the, on the move. And I can bring up, there's a, another company back here that I can bring up that are also have excellent morale. While these guys who are okay, they're good. They've got a morale of two, um, fighting against guys with morales of uh, four and five or worse. Uh, th three, four, five. Uh, these guys can sort of hold their own for five or six turns here, I I'm guessing, unless things go poorly. And then we can pull back here. And by then, it'll be late afternoon. Uh, and we'll see how things go and, and how it depends on how both battalions do for the Soviets. This These guys are on the cusp of... Uh, being combat ineffective. Uh, we, we're just going to have to play that by ear. And if this breaks too soon or too early, if it, if it becomes relatively useless from that perspective, then that's probably where I'd call the game. Even though I have a whole other battalion that I could bring in, I, I, I have a corresponding uh, set of uh, companies that, can, that will join the game later on as well that are highly effective morale rated and combat rated units. Plus I'll be bringing in Finnish mortars, which could, could help swing the balance of, uh, of the game a little bit. So artillery has been relatively ineffective for both sides as well. There is artillery in the game. There are some tanks that can potentially come in later on for the Soviets, but it's right near the end of the game. Not sure they're going to make the, uh, the compelling difference. Um, Enjoying it overall, I've, I've, I always I, I love playing t TCS just because of the uh, the way I use the, the plans here. It really gives a good, rich solo experience because I've got to stick to the plan uh, and I randomize that plan selection. Sometimes there's not a lot of variety in the plans, but there's enough to make it interesting. So 
there you go. That's what's going on in this particular uh, campaign with a Frozen Hell from the, the TCS system, Tactical Combat System, and uh, from MMP. All right, guys, we'll uh, talk to you soon, and we'll let you have a look at the big full map, and then we'll we'll peel out. Adios.